Welcome back, it's your favorite ge geometric deep learning YouTuber, Federico. Um, today I'll be continuing on the geometric deep learning saga with the graph attention networks. I'd like to thank you for, for the support that the first video received. I mean, I really wasn't expecting it. I thought that like maybe only myself and the friends I shared it with would watch it, but uh, I guess more people are interested, so I'll keep going. Of course, uh, I'm very close to quitting my PhD now and uh, just becoming a YouTuber full time. Now, I'd like to talk about graph attention networks by, by uh, kind of introducing them from the point of view of graph convolutional networks, because they are extremely related. And uh, so in, in the other, uh, in the first video, we looked about uh, at this kind of a normalization, right, where we, we do this symmetric normalization and it goes something like one over uh, di dj, right? So th this is the kind of normalization we're doing. And we cl quickly skimmed over d inverse a and said, well, this is not very used in practice, right? But uh, actually, I think uh, we, we, we should talk about the d inverse a because it's it's actually uh, theoretically, for, for instance, uh, but I guess in general, it's just an extremely interesting operation. And, and this is actually a, 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 an operator which is um, very related to random walks over graphs. And like, if you imagine it, uh, the, the form of this uh, d, d inverse A will we'll look like if we focus on a single row, will we'll look something like uh, some one over di and so on, right? And, and actually there will be di of these uh, one over di's, right? So, so if, we, if we sum over uh, this uh, d, uh, this, uh, d inverse A over, over um, let's say over all the, um, how could we write it over all the j j elements of, of this right so um so something like this right uh we'd be pretty much just uh, getting a bunch of uh, one over di's and we'd be getting di's di of them right so this would look something like this and this would equal one right so uh we have that these um that these that this row uh, sums to one and we also have, of course, that this one over di is is always greater than zero, right? So, so th this forms a probability distribution, and this probability distribution would on, on this uh, sample graph would look something like this. So, if we go here, it'd be would probability one third, here one third, uh, and here one third, uh, and then the other way around it'd be here be one, for instance, here be one half. Uh, this is getting a bit messy, one half, but you, you get the gist of it, right? So, so pretty much what, whenever you have a node with n neighbors, the probability of going to one of, of the neighbors is one over n. So you have a uniform distribution and you're saying, let's say I'm at this node here with probability one third, I can go either to this one, to this one, or to this one, because there's three neighbors. If there were four, then there will be every node would have a probability one fourth for, for, for me to jump to that node, right? So this is a very interesting operation and it's is related to, to random walks over graphs where where you're pretty much saying I'm equally likely to jump to any in any direction and and this forms a mark of change so you can imagine that like well me jumping from the node where I'm at to the the following node is independent of my past for instance right so this is actually a very nice operation right uh, it might, like if you did convolutions you, you'd be pretty much uh, weighting uh, or normalizing everything by a third for for example in this case so, um, so again, this is the the form we would have uh, if we use this uh, d inverse a. But now, uh, I guess the the steps, the next step for graph attention networks is to be a little bit more clever with this, or, or at least to give it more flexibility. So you can imagine this this d uh, d inverse a uh, graph convolutional network type of model is is a is a special case of a graph attention network where all the attention coefficients. Are, um, are uniform, right? So instead, let's do something m more machine learning inspired. So let's say we have this, um, this A function, which is a multi-layer perceptron, and then we, we pass I and, and J, so the, the, actually let me be consistent with notation, this would be like your XI and XJ. So pretty much all this A is, is a, is a neural network. These are some learnable weights. And this, um, this operation is, is outputting some kind of raw, raw value that's saying like, oh, if this number is high, then probably this connection IJ is important. And if this number is low, it's not as important. Okay, but this is not going in general to form a probability distribution. So we just have to, to force it to be one and we'll use a softmax uh, function. So what we can do is simply exponentiate this uh, EIJ. So this EIJ is kind of these raw activations. 
uh, and then we can simply um, normalize it by the exponential of um, of of ik, right? So uh, th from this, it's immediate that like if you sum over the j's of these alpha j's, you get one because uh, of the way this is normalized. Uh, and then also, it's uh, every alpha j will be uh, will be will be will actually be between zero and one, right? Um, so this is uh, this is also forming a probability mass function, and it will look something like this. So now, if you have your graph, uh, I mean, I'll try to draw it just uh, so. So let's say this is like your your x i, your node of reference, right? So you you pretty much have from all of these neighbors, you would have some kind of let's uh, some alpha. Um, which way would it be? I guess uh, some, it, it doesn't really matter, but like, let's say this is like x1, then this would be like your alpha i1, and then this, let's say this is uh, x2, you'd get some uh, alpha i2, and so on, right? So, so you, you pretty much get all of these weights for, for your neighborhood. And then again, these weights form, um, form a probability mass function. So it's pretty much, re while, while this normalization gave a uniform weight, so all these weights would be like, like the same, then effectively here we can learn any kind of probability mass function. So, so the, the, the hope is that the model is able to learn, oh, for, for whatever reason, this ij pair is very important. So I'm going to give it lots of, uh, of, of mass to, to this connection. And this other one is maybe not as important, so I'm going to not give it so much mass, right? And... Uh, so the model actually will look something like this now. Uh, so again, extremely, oh my god, uh, extremely similar to what we were doing before. So again, we we're convolving over these ij. Oh, here I forgot to put a nonlinearity. So uh, I guess also here, uh, there's a nonlinearity. And then what we can do is simply say, well, this will be some your ij's uh, w x uh, j. And this is it. This is actually it. This is a, called a graph attention network. So this is a, a GAT. Uh, and it's extremely similar to a graph convolutional network where we're effectively only changing these normalizations. It's also very similar to a graph convolutional network if you took this normalization. But now, instead of having a uniform probability, uh, kind of, yeah, weighing everything by uniform probability, we are weighing by probability which we learn in this way. So we will have some multilayer perceptron and then pass it through some softmax activations. Now, there is one slight detail. Actually, in practice, what people tend to do is uh, is called multi-head attention. So now, imagine you do this uh, kind of process, uh, but k times. So uh, k parallel attention heads, which learn different probability mass functions because they have maybe these a's are initialized uh, in k different ways, right? And then uh, you, you do the exact same thing. So again, i over j, but, but now your uh, ij also kind of you have one of these uh, alpha ij's for each attention head. And then you again have this w, again you might have like a different w for each attention, uh, and so on. So this, uh, this two bars uh, means concatenation. So you're effectively concatenating your, your representations. And, and this is actually just a form of regularization. So, so this is, you can imagine this maybe even as, as some kind of ensemble. Uh, you, you, because what, what may tend to happen is that if you only learn one of these attention, uh, one of these attention heads, then uh, your training might be unstable or you might have like a lot of, a, a lot of um, variance in your outputs, right? So, uh, so this is just a way to, to make training more stable and, and, and help with overfitting. And, and actually, this is it. This is uh, the graph attention networks. Uh, I hope uh, that this was uh, clear. And uh, actually, in the next video, we will talk about a very deep connection between graph attention networks and, uh, and transformers. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.